Good afternoon, Charles. Good afternoon, sir. Um, thank you. I hope everyone is alright. Welcome to today's social science lesson. Uh, today we'll be moving on to unit 3, which is key features of your unit interpretation. But before we move on, I'd like to ask to please recap on our previous lesson in unit, which is unit 2, um, the video features of our unit and your interpretation. Right? So just to recap, I would like for us to start by defining these three most important terms from our previous unit, which are erosion, deposition, and weather. Can someone please define erosion for us? Yes, Toki. Erosion is the movement of soil, the mud, or the rock, and other particles, usually uh, as caused by wind and water or ice. Thank you very much. Right. So the last three that you mentioned, bring water, ice, other agents, right? Are yes. Thank you. So who can define weather in our class? Um, yes. So weathering is the breaking down of rocks and their minerals. Okay. Weathering what is the breaking down of these minerals or rocks, right? Yes. Then once you start transporting them, it's now what? Erosion. Erosion is very well. So finally, you can define um, deposition for us. Can I? Yes. Uh, the deposition is actually the laying down of the eroded material, usually by water, wind, yes, or ice. Okay, thank you very much. That's wonderful. So, deposition on the other hand is what is the opposite or is the final process of the erosion. Mm -hmm. um, has occurred, right? It is yes. the laying down. Once these materials or rocks have been broken down and transported, the final process is what is laying them down. Right? Yeah. So that is the position. It's basically laying them down um, elsewhere. Thank you so much. So um, we also discussed in our previous lesson, we also discussed the river features of erosion and the position, right? So first of all, let us to please name the three um, courses of the river that we have. Yes. It's the upper course, uh, the middle course, and the lower course. Yes. So just to quickly uh, write it down, I hope you guys can see we have the upper course, right? Mm -hmm. We have the middle course, and we have the lower, lower course, right? There are certain things that distinguish these three courses, right? Mm -hmm. Which might be the type of fluid wall process, whether it's open and deposition found in the different courses, the water that's found there, and also the landforms, the features of the landforms that we find in these different courses, right? So we're going to start off with the upper course. And the upper course, what type of um, landform is most dominant? What do we find in the upper course? Um, in the upper course, we find the waterfall, that's a land. Yes, that's the landfall that is most dominant or most occurrent in the upper course. In the right? air, yes. yes. What type of waters do we find in the upper course? In the upper course, there's, uh, there's less water and lots of erosion. Yes, there's less water and lots of erosion as well as. Is the water flowing fast, rapidly, or slowly? It's really fast, rapidly. Yes, we find fast flowing waters, right? Yes. yes. Um, what type of erosion, we say erosion of course, but specifically what type of erosion of course is the upper course? It's, it, it, it's the vertical course. Wonderful, the vertical erosion, right? Mm. Yes. As compared to the middle course, let's now move on to the middle course. In the middle course, which landform um, feature is more dominant or evident? We, in the middle course, we find the meanders. And yes. then there's lateral uh, form of erosion, and the um, water is less faster compared to the upper course. Yes, yes. The land that you find in the middle course is what is you find the meandering river, right? Yes. The meander bed. Yes. Remember, the meander is when it is an S like shape, right? It's when the river, the river curves, right? Yes. That is the meander. It's the meander bed, and the type of erosion that occurs. Or the type of fluid wall process that occurs in this course is mostly what's erosion, right? Yeah. The type of erosion, to be specific, is what? 
the lateral one. The lateral one. And the upper court, you have vertical erosion where the water is fast flowing with the right hand and it types the river, it channels the river in a vertical hole. But in the middle course, it is now west. In the middle course, sorry for that. In the middle course, we now find a more lateral erosion. The river is a little bit sideways. It's now becoming a bit wider. Mm. So yes, we kind of end up, we have the rapid wall, so the water is still channeling the high speed, and the most dominant flow flow is the erosion. But towards the end of the middle course, what type of removal flow do we have? Towards the end, we're going into the lower course, right? Yes, so, so the lower course towards the lower course, which type of, but we're still in the middle course, right? Yeah. Which type of uh, removal flow do we have? It's the deposition. Yes, wonderful. We have deposition, right? Deposition is also occurring in the middle of the course. Yes. So in the middle of the course, we have both erosion and deposition, but the dominant fluid process is still erosion. Mm -hmm. But we do find it a bit towards the end of the middle of the course. So now we go to the final course, which is the lower course. Um, what type of fluid process do we then find in the middle of the course? The middle course, I think we just discussed the middle course right now. I mean the lower course, I'm sorry. In the lower course, we find the ox bowl. The ox the bowl process, what type of fluid process do we find in the lower course? Is it deposition or erosion? It's deposition, I'm sorry. Yes, the lower course is characterized by, by deposition, right? Mm -hmm. so what type of mantles are um, a result of this deposition? Oh, yeah, landforms. It's the uh, ox bowl. Yes, we find the ones from the lakes. So this one of them. What other landform do we find? The alluvial fan. We have the alluvial fan, yes, and what else? Um no, I'm not sure of the other one. Then we find also we have a delta. What is known as a delta? A delta is a triangular shaped form of a deposited material, maybe sand, rock particles, anything like that, at the mouth of the river, which is opening towards the sea or ocean, right? So then at the mouth of the river, at the end of the river, we find deposits of the eroded material. The material that was eroded in the upper course and the middle course is then what? Deposited in the lower course, right? Yes. Yes. It may, if the water suddenly reduces the speed of um, traveling, what we may find is that these failures are then not carried out into the ocean or the sea, but are deposited in the mouth. Which will be at times form a triangular shaped um, island that is known as the delta, right? On the other hand, the alluvial fan is like a braided stream, right? It's like a braided stream where there are little um, the branch like uh, parts of water, channels of water. So, today in this case, I'm going to start off with an activity, right? I'm going to hand you guys on the hand on the Worksheet along with images of the different types of landforms of the sea uh, that are caused by erosion and deposition, right? So, this worksheet um, is basically on the sea features of erosion and deposition. Um, and we will discuss it in a moment, maybe the speech behind the couch.
Some are bigger and some are a bit smaller. Okay, we see waves, yes, water. Yes. And yeah, and we see, um, should I say the beginning of the beach slide? Yes, it seems to be that this video is taken at uh, the beach, right? Yes. This is the beach and we have waves and coming. Yes. Yes. Uh, is there anything else? Um, yes. There's something else, I think, um, should I say that such, which is actually shown here at the beginning of the beach, as a such, and the backwash. Okay, yes, so we also have, thank you so much, Shoki. We also have, from those that have been to the beach, like, has anyone that's been to the beach before? Yes. Yes, we have people, so for those that have been to the beach, this is, um, the not the first time you've seen this. Um, the foam like foam like water, this is the water we see, mm. the waves are coming right, mm. and this foam like water here is basically caused by what? By the water reaching the beach or the sand, right? Mm. So this water now um, crashes or means it crashes into the beach, it creates a foam like pattern. So from this guys, I want you to make use of this knowledge, you guys are going to answer our short activity. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm going to play you guys the second video. Then after the second video, we are then most probably going to move on to our activity, right? Okay. So please pay attention, look, and just deduce what you can. Not for what you can from the video. Anything that you can link to your prior knowledge of your visit at the ocean or your beach, maybe a movie you watched, or National Geographic television. Anything that you can link to your prior knowledge from this video, please take down notes. On the pictures that are being taken, just the back of those images are blank, so you can make use of that to take down notes. Or uh, anything you see in the video, or anything you might link to your kind of knowledge, right? That will help build on to this person's content of knowledge. So I'm waiting for the videos for another minute or two, and we will begin with our activity.
Please note the difference. The differences in the way it lives from far out in sea, right? And once they reach the rocks, which is closer to land. So just note the differences. If you are satisfied now or have seen enough, I'm just going to pause the video and now moving on to our, our lesson, our activity for the lesson, right? The first part of the activity uh, will be defining terms, terminology that are um, crucial in understanding or mastering the content of um, this unit, unit 3, right? C feature of the original deposition. So please you take out your dictionaries, um, you are allowed to make use of your devices as well. And um, please define the following um, term, right? First we have stitch, we then have swash, we have backwash, we have hydraulic force, we have a brain adaptation, right? So please make use of your knowledge or notes that you scribbled also from the videos that we have just watched. The videos are meant to help you in actually answering these questions or defining them, right? So please make use of your dictionaries, your devices, as well as the videos that you have just watched. Um, I have also provided you guys with um, images there of the landforms, of the various landforms that are results of the of your position and the region that you see, right? So you may also um, page through those images if it will help you in painting sins and giving an idea of what um, these terminologies might, these terms might mean. So please, um, you have, I'm going to give you guys, um, let's say seven minutes to do that. We have six questions. I'm going to give you guys, um, I think seven, ten minutes to please define those that we'll discuss that all together the class. We'll discuss our findings and how they might relate to the videos we just watched. Then from there we'll move on to the second phase of our lesson. So please guys, you have seven minutes from now, please um, start finding the definitions of these terms. I'll just be moving around the class. Um, if anyone has a question or anything you need clarification on, you can ask me.
undercutting type. Or oh, that waterfall. Yes, similar to similar to the last um, the last week's concert type right, with the waterfall and the waterfall type. Right? Mm -hmm. Remember we said when the when the water erodes when the water erodes um the base, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The overhanging rock. The overhanging rock, the one that remains at, at the top, mm -hmm. collapses the base. The base has been eroded, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing occurs with the um, headland. At the headland, um, we have a cliff, right? And the base is then eroded by the water, right? This cliff over time may collapse. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the rock that forms part of the cliff at the top may mm -hmm. collapse mm -hmm. over time due to its base being eroded. There's no yes. support. Oh, the yes, it may collapse then. Just rocks, the rocks that collapse or are the rocks that you may find um, on the, at the bay, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Or further just from the sea. Okay, okay, okay. So guys, please be careful when looking up uh, the channels on the internet uh, via Google, just make sure that your answer relates to because um, Google can't give you a generalized uh, just definition, just make sure it relates to uh, what we deal with, which is, which is geomorphology, right? We deal with geography. Just make sure that your answer relates to or you per se can define that definition in your own words and make it relate to what we are dealing with, the concept that we are dealing with, which is the CT to the building and the right? For instance, fish. Fish may mean that it has more than one meaning, right? Yes. So just be careful on the, um, the type of which definition you actually choose to include in your answers. We've had enough time to look at the definitions and now we're going to share our findings with the rest of each other, right? So who can help us define the term fish? Yes. Uh, what I found is the it is the distance traveled by a wave without being interrupted. For example, in the in the video what I observed was the, the wave um, when the wave travels for a longer distance without being interrupted, it actually has more force to hit up the, the, the rocks by the bay. Okay, so that's wonderful. Yes, right. So, fetch is basically, let me write this down. Fetch is what is the distance traveled by a wave without being interrupted, right? Fetch is the distance traveled. By a wave uninterruptedly, right? Un uninterrupted, right? So, this is the by a wave uninterrupted. 
started, right? Mm. Yes, wonderful. So, uh, for an example, Tricky mentioned that in the video, um, when the waves were coming from the sea, right? Mm. That distance, for instance, from where the, the wave originated or was built up till the rocks where they crashed mm. is basically what the fish. Right? That's the distance. That's the distance that the wave has managed to travel. So move on to the next term, swash. So we can help us define the term swash. Yes. It is the, the brush of the water, um, the sea water. Okay. Uh, up the beach. Okay. It is the rush of the sea water, right? Mm -hmm. Up. The beach, isn't it? Mm. Yes. Uh, after, after breaking of the wave. After breaking of the wave, right? Mm. After breaking of oh. of the wave, right? So by breaking of the wave, what we mean is once the wave or where the wave actually meets the land or the beach or where it is interrupted oh. that is where the wave is broken right yes so, so a swash is basically the rush of the sea water up the beach after breaking of the wave yes you have a question yes uh, it is safe to say up to where the wave disappears uh it yeah, basically dies out oh, yes, 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 yes. yes where it dies out yes so oh, okay. yes. swash is that movement of the water on the beach you know that foam like water up the beach moves up a bit, yeah. then it returns a bit. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. So swash when swash occurs, it might also what it might also deposit material or rock particles that it has carried out from sea, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes. It may be seashells, it may be rock particles, or stem particles, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. The that, shells even. The, the shells. Yes, seashells, yes, yes. yes. So moving on to the next terminology, backwash. Who can help us define backwash? Yes? Uh, it is when the water that was actually moving up the sea returns back to the sea. Exactly right. Why did we just discuss, right? When this water, when the swash actually returns, when the sea water returns into the sea, right? Yes. That is backwash. So defining it is the? The return of water into the sea. Uh, let's see the return of the uh, of the of the sea water uh, into from the beach into the sea. Let's just say the return from the beach. Let's to be specific. Uh, sea water from the beach. the next term hydraulic force. What do you understand by the term hydraulic? Uh, what I can deduce is that the the first part of the word hydro it, it refers to water. Yes, that's so, to do with water wonderful. Yeah so I, I guess it, it should be the, the force that is generated by the water. Wonderful right hydraulic force is the force generated by water. In this particular case, since we're dealing with wave, we'll just say by wave action, isn't it? Mm. Yes. Wave action. Wonderful. Um, next term, a brain. Yes. Um, a brain has to do with the, the crashing of rocks. Um, so it should, it might be the way away uh, by friction or erosion. Yes. To upgrade, yes, to uh, to wear away by friction, friction or erosion. Or erosion. Uh, to upgrade is to wear away by friction, isn't it? Yes. 
Friction by what? Friction by other particles. Yeah, by other particles, the rock particles from the sea. Exactly, friction by rock particles from the sea. Right? Um, friction. Friction by rock particles, right? Or simply erosion. There we go, right? So the final terminology uh, we have here is attrition. Can you quickly help us define attrition? Um, attrition is the, the way away by attrition. So, may you please explain the difference between upgrade and attrition? Yes, these two terms are actually similar and, and they're very similar. I mean, you know, they're the same thing, right? Um, but to upgrade, on the other hand, is what? To wear away by friction, by rock. Particles or erosion, you know, to weigh away by friction. Friction caused by what? By drop particles or simply erosion. On the other hand, attrition is basically uh, friction by. Um, it's just friction or erosion. It's just way away by friction. Friction was caused by what? By water. Remember the water causes friction, right? Okay, so is the water or the waves have the potential to cause. Friction against these um, rocks or landfall, right? So it is basically one and the same thing. Uh, but defining it, we would say that attrition is um, to break down, so similar to weathering, right? Mm. To break down by uh, cause of. Friction, right? Okay, so these terms are similar. These are all the terminology that we use, not all, but these are some of the terms that we find in our unit, right? And some of them are really similar to each other, like the two. So now that we're going to move on to the next phase of our lesson, which is um, discussing the waves, right? Yes. And uh, types of waves. Okay, guys, so the next phase of our activity is focused on the waves, right? What we were just discussing now, it's focused on the wave. So here we have, um, we're going to differentiate between constructed and destructive waves, right? So quickly, before we move on, I would like to then ask you, what do you think, uh, how the waves are formed by what? How do you think waves are formed? Um, yes. I, I think the waves are, are formed by the um, when, when the wind in the in the sea or ocean actually um, blows a porous yeah the surface of the surface of the, of the sea. Water. Yes, yes. It's wonderful. And, and it might be the underground forces, maybe the tectonic plates. Also, yes, that's another another way in which waves are formed. Yeah. Right? Friction caused by wind on the surface of the sea, right? Yes. It drags the water, right? Yes. yes. Or maybe waves may be a result of tectonic plate uh, movements, right? Yes. For instance, during an earthquake, if there's a plate that subsides or whatnot, the plate that moves, uh, what happens is that movement will cause a ripple effect, right? It will cause, oh, yes. yes, a ripple will cause movement or it will send out a wave of pulse into the ocean and that would be intensified depending on how long the wave travels before it reaches land um, and such so other factors, right? So what determines um, the wavelength of the wave is number one, we have the strength of the wind, isn't it? Yes, the strength of the wind or the magnitude of the tectonic movement of the plate, right? Or the earthquake, for instance. The, Strength of the wind or the strength of the or the magnitude of a wind earthquake. Right? Number two, we have we we also have what the fetch. We define the fetch in our previous phase of this lesson, which we say was the distance 
you know, a wave travels in uninterrupted like mm -hmm. it's the fish. The longer the distance it travels uninterrupted, the more potential it has to um to, to cause more destruction, like to become a more destructive wave. Mm -hmm. It builds up more energy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a more potential. Like the fish, the strength of the wave as well as the strength of the the magnitude of the um, the magnitude of yes, whether it's an earthquake or yes, mm -hmm. there's, there's one, there's a final um, factor that determines uh, the, 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 the strength or the, the size of the wings. Um, you want to try? Uh, we mentioned the magnitude of the earthquake. Yes. The Maybe the strength, the wind, strength of the wind or the magnitude of the magnitude of the Short duration of time, it will not generate large waves. 
Beds is an uninterrupted distance where the wind blows without much change in direction. The Pacific Ocean, due to having the greatest body of open water, creates the largest waves. As the wind continues to blow for long durations, waves get higher from trough to crest, and both the wave length and period become longer. The most frequent wave height is eight and a half feet. That is so fetch. Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. When the wind is steady, white caps form, and then the waves start to break. This is referred to as a fully developed sea. Next week, learn about swell and road waves. So this was the video on um, wavelength, right? The tiny wavelength and how waves are formed. I'm really going to play another video, right? So I'm allowing you the chance to read, please read the notes that are presented in this video. Um, so please um, read. I'm encouraging you guys to read these notes, right? And I will be skipping parts of the new one as the video plays. Please make notes or take down um, the notes on in these videos as you read along. Um, it's when I age you, I'm telling the following, I'm filling in those columns, like the different shape construction and structure rules. Okay, so what we have now here is a representation of constructed wave, right? This is the turbulence at the bottom of the sea of the ocean, right? And constructed waves are closer together. Therefore, they have what? They have this frontal wash and a weaker back wash. They deposit materials. More materials are deposited on constructed waves, isn't it? Yes. The small wave height and closer wave these waves are close together, right? As you can see in the video, they, the waves are following each other at closer um, intervals. So that they, they are close together as compared to destructive waves that are further apart, right? Mm -hmm. So on the other hand, with destructive waves, we... Okay, that's part of the disruption due to internet connection, but you can just continue from this with destructive waves, right? The wave lengths are much higher, right? This is the wave length. The distance between the crest, the top of the wave is known as the crest, right? And the bottom is known as what? The trough. Isn't it? Trough. The distance between the crest and the trough is what we know as the wavelength. Right? So there's a higher wavelength with the destructive waves, and they are what? They are further apart. 
the distance between the two waves is what? They are further, further apart. That's compared to the consecutive waves which are closer together. So this then results in what? In a weaker, we have a weaker what? We have a weaker swatch, isn't it? We have a weaker swash. Remember, yeah, swash is that gentle movement up, up, up the beach of water, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So we have a weaker swash and a what? A stronger backwash. A stronger back. A stronger backwash, isn't it? This is because the wave. The, the distance between the two, uh, between the waves, allows more time for it to, uh, to build up more momentum and potential energy in it. That's why it's more destructive. For instance, with tsunamis, or tsunamis, right? You go all tsunamis, right? We've seen them, the most, the most occurring during um, earthquakes in, in continents, or they affect most continents like Asia, uh, Europe, and so on and such, isn't it? So, Tsunamis are basically a result of, of tectonic plate movements. Right? The ripple effect sends out um, or creates waves in the ocean or the sea. Right? So the time, the longer time the waves have to build up, the more potential uh, for destruction. Isn't it? So the further apart the waves, the more um, potential for destruction. What this then causes is that the waves are more destructive, they will destroy, be it landforms or houses near the coastal line, right? Mm -hmm. And the, what we mean by the weaker swash is what happens is it, the water doesn't gently swash up the beach, is it? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does the opposite. The water or the waves are then rough, they are turbulent. There's large amounts of water and there's a, there's a higher height, isn't it? The wave lives are actually high. So then it has a stronger backwash because it carries out all the material it has destroyed or destructed or taken from the land. Right? The soil, the rocks, the debris from the houses, the cars, people, everything, right? It carries them back into the ocean, right? It's a stronger backwash as compared to a weaker swash. So I'm going to give you guys 10 minutes to quickly answer this activity.
Why were they constructed that came together? Okay. Waves are further apart. Isn't it? And the waves are close together, right? Mm -hmm. Close together. Then moving on to the backwash, the swash. Backwash continues before the next swash. Which one does that fall under? Does it fall under the constructive or the big uh, destructive wave? So uh, the destructive wave it, it repeats before the, the next wash. Yes, yeah, that's with the backwash, isn't it? Yes. Uh, backwash occurs. Backwash repeats before the next swash, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The backwash. Repeats before the next swash. And the opposite of that, right? Well, the, the next swash arrives before the backwash can repeat for them the constructive, isn't it? It is. It is. Remember, we said the waves are further are closer together with the constructive waves. Yes, yes. They follow each other um, after a short while. Yes. So, the next swash. Occurs before back wash can repeat. Okay, then finally, the beaches are steep and narrow, or the beaches are wide and gentle sloping. For the constructive wave, which one falls? Uh, the beaches are wide and gently sloping. Is correct, right? For the construction of the beaches are wide and gently sloping. On the other hand, the destruction waves are the beaches are what? So here in front of you guys we have a PowerPoint slide of C features on the audio and deposition right? Mm -hmm. So I am going to I have I've given you guys printouts of these images. So I'm going to give you guys time, five minutes to quickly name titles from your previous or your old knowledge to name these landforms, right? Then we will go over the collections together. So I will be, we have, we have the pictures with you, you have the printed out uh, hard copies with you, but I will be moving on with the slides here, right?
Yes, um, these, these, these um, tall landforms are then known as what? What is in front of them? It's the stack. Yes, these are stacks, right? They are referred to, um, they are self evident. They are called stacks because they seem as if someone had been layering rocks right, onto one each other. They are tall, isn't it? Then the opposite of the stacks on the other hand are what? The other is not. This is yeah, the short ones. The stump. Yes, the stumps. We have stumps, right? Mm -hmm. That is the opposite of the stacks, right? Mm -hmm. the, this red form on the other hand is known as the what? Which one? Mm -hmm. This, that one. This is known as the. I don't see where you're pointing. The whole red form. This one okay, here. This is the. That's a beach. Yes, this is the beach. This is the water here. We have a bit of. Rocks. The head that was once here has retreated, right? And it, and it, it left yes, a stump piece of bit of uh, rock here. Oh, this is the head land. This on the other is known as the what? The cliff. Isn't it? Oh, yes. So this whole area, this whole area is known as a what? The bay. The bay, correct. This whole area is known as a bay, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, the whole area is known as a bay. The, the following platform is known as a. Oh. This whole platform is, is referred 
to have a the whole leg form is known as a head leg, isn't it? But this is the top of this specifically is known as a yes. No, there's a tree. The waterfall is known as the record features. Oh, where you just feel it. This is known as a, a cliff. Yes, it is a tree, right? The head leg, the edge of the head leg. Wait, I have a question. Yes. So the head leg is the actually the leg. Yes, it's the leg. This is the leg. This is the leg. Oh, the leg. The head leg. This is the leg. Basically, so the leg. The head leg is this extends to the legs. This is where you move in land. There's rows, there's houses, oh. people live in. The edge of the land, which meets the sea, is known as the cliff. The yeah, edge. that's what I was asking that. Did it say to say on, on the other picture? On the green one? Okay, yes. That's a, the small portion of a land, right? So. Yes. Yeah, this. so is it safe to say it's also a head land? This. Yeah. Yeah, this one has, it is too, it joins. It's just we cannot see, it, but yes, it is joined by oh, okay. the head. Yes, yes, yes. But if it is only, if it is separated from the head, then, and it is only joined by a pathway of sand or whatever, we refer to that as a tombolo. What? A tombolo, but we will get to that in a second, right? Oh. We will get to that in a second. Um, this is we have already defined it. We say it is a stump. Mm. This. this we can help us define this quickly. Which one? It is self explanatory media. We have what? That's a strange. Is it the same thing part of the sea? This is the known as a sand bar. Oh. This is known as a. This is sand, isn't it? It is known as a sand bar. Oh. Sand bar, right? Then in between the sand bars we have what? We have water. Mm -hmm. This water is known as what? This water is known as the, um, the trough. It is known as the trough, right? Then you have a channel in which the sea water is able to replenish or keep the water within, between these sand bars are always available, isn't it? Then further towards land we have the what we have the beach. Yes, as you see, um, we have the sand bars. Those not that maybe it's not that visible in this image, but we have the sand bars. Then in between the sand bars, we have what like, water? Just a piece of water, which is like the trough. We refer oh, to that as the trough. The sand bars. Yes, in between the sand bars, we have the trough. We have the water that is falling in between the sand bars. It's not the trough. Mm -hmm. Then the channel is basically the pathway or that the water in between the sand bars is connected to the sea the water and sea right that is known as the channel oh. this on the other hand we can quickly make this for us Some point was here. Oh. 
over time, the water has eroded or eaten up, and, and it has retreated, has eroded and forced these, um, the headland, right, the base of the headland to be eroded. So the, the, the one that is actually like the, the erectile like landing, so they say it's way Yes, these lands are marks of where the headland was. At some point, oh. the then it retreats, which we call it, we call it headland retreat, it retreats inland, inland or inland retreat. It, the headland is moving inland, it's moving backwards because of it is being eroded. Over time, the base is eroded, the head, what, the cliff of the overhanging rock collapses in there. This collapsed particles of rocks are taken by the sea in there. Then what it means is the wave cut, we refer to these marks here as mm -hmm. the wave cut notch. These are wave cut notches, isn't it? Yes. Okay, um, this is an example. This is an image of what? That's a, a cave. Yes, a cave, right? So, a tombolo. This is what a tombolo is. Like. When we have a massing of land, a land mass in the middle of the ocean that is connected by a spit. Remember, spit is basically your native sand path, mm. isn't it? We refer to this as a tombolo, right? If it was just a little rock here, we'd say it's a stump, isn't it? Mm. A stump. But it, it is a huge land mass, I mean, land mass or mass of rock or something, right? Then it is connected to the headland or to the land, basically, by a, a path of Yes, so I see that one has actually gone trees on it. If it didn't have trees and it wasn't connected to the land, would it be would it be a stump or a No, it's not about the trees. It's basically the landers and it be connected to oh, the landers. Yes, the, yes, the landers. This the rock here and the the, the sand part. Oh, whether it's connected or not. No, it is, we refer to it as a tombolo because it is connected. Never mind the trees, it's not about the trees, but we're dealing with the sand, the deposited sand, and the, the rock, right? The large point. If it was a smaller rock here, we would say it's just a top, it's just a stump, right? It has, it's, it's not connected to what's a huge body or a huge mass of, of rock or something, and it's connected to the land, the mainland, by the sand. Yes, by this thing, this one is a tombolo. Okay. Yes, tombolo. The spelling is T O M B O L O. Tombolo. So, to quickly move on to the next one, that's another example of it, of the tombolo. Here we have the mainland, we have the spit connecting this uh, landmass, yes, the rock hole. This is known as a tombolo, isn't it? If this was not here, if we did not have this, if we did not have the state, we would then refer to it as a star. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, just to quickly explain how we have that wave cut notch, right? what happens is the sea attacks the base of the mainland, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, it goes, it eats at the base of the, of the, of the mainland. Mm -hmm. So, then what forms is a wave cut notch? It cuts this notch, right? Then the overhanging rocks no longer support it properly. So what happens is the cliff then collapses. Remember the headland was saying then collapses over time. As time goes on, the wave sea attacks the base, right? The wave cut notch enlarges, it oh, retreats, cool. right? This will then what? It will then collapse. The headland or overhanging cliff will then collapse, isn't it? I suppose it's the rock that was asking about in your arm. Yes, it will then collapse, isn't it? Then what? We have then is a, a wave cut platform. This was way at some point the wave that was the head the mainland was here, right? Mm -hmm. But then what it means, those scars you see are known as what the wave cut platform. Mm -hmm. And the cliff then retreats inland, isn't it? It retreats inland as the arrow is indicating. Mm -hmm. this, this is just a summarized um, diagram with the arc, we have the headland, we have the step which is the taller, the taller um, version of the stump, isn't it? The original headland was at some point here. 
then it collapsed to what the name was a stump. Then it collapsed, I mean, the parts between the mainland and the piece of all collapsed, right? What the name was a stack, as it did. So we have the headland, we have the arc, the headland is repeated this way, we have the sea cave, as it did. And the cutting is what occurs here. The waves crash into or attack the base of the mainland or the headland. What we have in the process known as undercutting, as it did. Yes, and finally we have the beach, right? Those were deposit, those were landforms caused by rock erosion. And a landform caused by deposition is what the most occurred one is what? The beach. The beach is a deposit deposit of sand particles and rock particles that over time um, is brought about by constructive waves, right? Mm -hmm. So over time yes, mm -hmm. it creates a larger area which is known as the beach of the beach. So thank you guys so much for attending today's le um, lesson. If anyone has any questions, you may raise your hand. Um, but thank you guys so much for attending the lesson. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And until we meet again uh, during our next lesson, we will be discussing the impact of humans on erosion and deposition, isn't it? We'll be looking specifically at um, human activities such as mining, agriculture, isn't it? And um, yes, mining and agriculture uh, when it relates to erosion, right? Mm -hmm. So please go home, um, read our uh, mining and agriculture and how they contribute to erosion. Thank you guys so much. Until we meet again, enjoy the rest of your day.